we have an array of therapeutics to treat inflammatory skin diseases, and one of them is Janus kinase inhibitors, which now, as we've been waiting for a very long period of time, starting in 2022, we got two Janus kinase inhibitors in upadacitinib and also abracitinib to treat a atopic dermatitis, specifically um, those uh, adolescents and adults with uh, moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. These therapeutics have been revolutionary because these inflammatory skin disease need potent anti-inflammatories in order for them to improve. The days of us using older generation therapeutics like methotrexate and cyclosporine and systemic corticosteroids, I won't say are completely over, but we now have targeted and selective therapies with abracitinib and upadacitinib both being JAK1 selective therapies. And they're quite effective, not only in clearing the clinical presentation of atopic dermatitis, but most importantly and rapidly, they improve the itch really within the first days uh, of uh, treatment and, and therapy. And so clearly they are revolutionary, and that's just for atopic dermatitis. We also have two therapeutics. One is called baricitinib, a JAK1-2 inhibitor, and also ritlicitinib, which is a JAK3 tech inhibitor. They're all protein kinase inhibitors, both of those agents are used for treating severe alopecia areata. Another one of these conditions for which we really have had nothing in the toolbox uh, for a very long period of time, intralesional corticosteroids or other systemic therapies uh, that have significant toxicities like those that I referenced before for treating alopecia areata. JAK inhibitors are protein kinase inhibitors. They're exceptionally effective. They work very quickly. Clearly what we've learned from the clinical trials is probably higher doses work a little bit better. And we see this in a variety of disorders, even in addition to those for which the drugs are FDA approved. And I think that there are some concerns and limitations where side effects are concerned, but I don't really look at it that way. There's been some great work done by some of our board certified dermatology colleagues like Chris Bunick published in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology in 2022, a great paper kind of comparing, not specifically in a true meta-analysis, but looking at the incidence rates of the adverse events of interest that we worry about. I'll call them the, the three C's, uh, cancers, cardiac issues, major adverse cardiovascular events, um, and um, clots, we would say, those three Cs, so thromboembolic phenomenon. And he looked at that in the setting of atopic dermatitis and looked at drugs like abracitinib and upatacitinib. And what he basically found was that JAKs appear to be safer bets for us in treating our patients with atopic dermatitis. Michael Cameron from New York City also wrote an op-ed uh, in The Dermatologist uh, just about a year ago, and, and he kind of looked at the whole safety profile uh, of JAK inhibitors, and you know we, we find that there are certain populations for where they are not only incredibly effective but generally safe, but there are some areas where maybe there could be some concerns, where one just have to take a step back and provide some caution have greater discussion with our patients when they're over the age of 65 and, and certainly individuals that are smokers. People who have chronic infections, those that have background cardiovascular conditions, those individuals who have clotting disorders at baseline are probably not the best candidates for these therapies uh, in general. By and large, we have four agents that are available in our toolbox to treat two very important diseases in dermatology, and I think our patients are very fortunate to have those.